After Mr. Choquette, we'll move. Well, that, that finishes the speakers on that, that item. <clears throat> Good morning, Supervisors. I'll be speaking about the ordinance. I was reading the last version of the ordinance, uh, section one, paragraph four. Require enactment of a reasonable time, place, and manner restriction upon such unwelcome picketing activity. Since when do supervisors of a county make such restrictions? Besides this poorly written ordinance, makes no restriction, even though you say that in the introduction here, you later on in the ordinance, you make no prohibition about time or manner, like maybe the way we're dressed at a protest. I'm glad of that oversight, but why didn't you put it in? Are you afraid of that? Do you think it wouldn't fly? In a Supreme Court case relating the physical access to abortion clinics, it was determined that the basis of any generalized right to be left alone on a public street or sidewalk did not apply. Furthermore, quoting from Booth and Barry, let me put this up on the screen here, Uh, as a general matter, we have indicated that in public debate, our own citizens must tolerate insulting and even outrageous speech in order to provide adequate breathing space to the freedom protect, uh, protected by the First Amendment. Now, since these um, uh, sex offenders are going to be let out, Mr. Stone likes to get in the face of these people. That's fine. I'm okay with that. But... We don't want to get into the face of human traffickers. I wonder why. People protest for a reason. It's hard enough to encourage people to get up from com comfortable sofas or keyboards to actually attend the protest. When human rights abuses are the subject of such protests, they should never be restricted by law enforcement. Protesters must remain lawful, but they must also be safe, made safe by law enforcement. Law, law enforcement should also try to find out why they protest and follow up on allegations. Of all the protests I participated, officers have rarely seemed interested and eager to collect details about allegations of the protesters. When people have signs, stop the beatings, their first question should be, what beatings? Specifically about the ordinance, last week I spoke to Vern Loritzen, the Chiefs of Staff of Jeff Stone. I said, hey Vern, when's the ordinance going to be repealed? He says he doesn't want it repealed and continue to explain what they plan on doing. Well, I have a problem with that. It's not up to Mr. Jeff Stone to decide for all five of you here. Mr. Jeff Stone alone should not be stating that the ordinance will not be repealed. This ordinance, ordinance needs to be brought up to all supervisors for all to decide if first it should be repealed or not. Certainly, I believe Mr. Buster would like to have his say. Today there should be a vote to decide to fully repeal the ordinance or not, and then the details can be discussed. Supporting this ordinance is really enabling. It enables this cult. It enables the pain and suffering that hundreds are being inflicted right now as we speak. In the city of Chicago, excuse me, Well, I'll jump, I'll jump straight to this here. The, uh, well, the a ACLU put the city on notice, but now the city specifically says, if you read at the bottom, the, the, the city does not intend to enforce a similar ordinance. So do we have to wait for the big cities to tell you what to do here? Um, it's clearly, this ordinance is clearly for the board to save face. And as far as I'm concerned, it's as, it's as fake as a three dollar uh, bill. It's, it's really, it's really outrageous that we still have this ordinance in Riverside County. If it ever gets to, to be modified, that's another, um, another thing. If you, if you have that ordinance, it'll become very easy to modify it to maybe 300, 3,000 feet. This ordinance must be taken down. Please, thank you. All right, that concludes our speakers. We'll come back to the board. Any board comments? 